Oh, MasterChef's back on. I'll click back. MasterChef is the holy grail for all home cooks. Imagine being in this gigantic LA warehouse where all the magic and drama take place. Now, if you fancied yourself donning an apron at a professional cooking station with a well-stocked pantry and freezer, this show tops that. The ninth season takes the competition to a whole new level with tougher dishes, sophisticated techniques, as well as a more ferocious Gordon Ramsay at the helm. This season features not only the most interesting dishes, it has its share of the worst, too. Check out the drama with the top 10 worst dishes of MasterChef Season 9. Well, count me in. I love drama. Pan-roasted lamb chops with crispy potato stack, cauliflower puree, and sautéed asparagus. That's a mouthful. It's no secret that winning MasterChef opens culinary doors for both winners and contestants. At the end of the season, the champ gets to bring home $250,000 plus a whole load of opportunities. But to win the journey, the frontrunner must be worthy of an apron. We're not worthy! Each of the three judges has eight aprons to give out. Earn one and you get coached by either Chef Gordon Ramsay, Aaron Sanchez, or Joe Bastianic. In this pilot episode of season nine, everyone's audition piece is their signature dish. The judges are looking for big dreamers and eager students. Mark came in with a lot of confidence. One of the youngest contestants at 19 has been living and breathing food his entire life. But his dish was a great disappointment. Somebody needed to man up a little bit. Seasoning, however, was on point. Joe had a lot more to say. All the swagger and technique has to translate into a dish. Well, Mark was supposed to say goodbye when his raw talent overpowered his cockiness. Joe felt that he saw raw talent. He handed Mark the apron on the condition that Mark take instruction seriously. Chef Ramsay and Aaron weren't too happy about it, though. I'm not happy about this. Botched churros. Mom, churros are good for you. They're ethnic. Who knew that this glorious little strip of fried dough dusted with sugar and cinnamon could be the downfall of so many? In this MasterChef Season 9 episode, the count is down to 19 of the best amateur cooks. Their task was to make street food for a World Cup fan. But the twist to this is an immune contestant gets to choose. Cesar, the exempt contestant, had the opportunity to select which dish the rest would make. Among his choices were pizza frita, churros con chocolate, and a nice juicy burger. But the burger, the burger, dude. He picked churros con chocolate. It was an elimination test. What's the challenge behind the churros? Aaron Sanchez says it's one of the most challenging things to make. In fact, Chef Sanchez won't even think of putting churros on his menu unless he has someone who can make it properly. The crisp on the outside and light on the inside is a skill as much as it is an art. The chocolate, on the other hand, is chocolate and cinnamon. Looks easy, but it isn't. As time was nearly up, everyone became frantic. They all pulled it off just in the nick of time. Bowen got the hot seat. He double-fried the churros. Sugar was evenly distributed. But overall, the churros didn't taste as bad as they looked. It's not as bad as it looks. Banana cream pie. I sure wish somebody would give me a banana cream pie. One of the challenges for episode six was banana cream pie. Banana cream pie is a glorious combination of a flaky pie crust, custard, caramelized bananas, and cream whipped to perfection. What makes this pie such a pleasure to eat is exactly what makes it really tricky to get right. In this pressure test, banana-flavored extract was a no-no. Cookie crumb crusts were deemed immoral. Too much sugar was considered sacrilege. A delightful banana cream pie is built around a pastry cream. It's a delicate balance among egg yolks, cornstarch or flour, and sugar. The mixture is stirred over low heat until thick. Vanilla and butter are then added. In this challenge, Farhan didn't get the memo, and he began to crack upon scrutiny by the world's best chefs. He resisted at first, in the end he cracked. It was a flat banana cream pie, wobbly. Whipped cream on the soft side, which might require a straw to eat. Derek crossed swords with Gordon too. No vanilla bean, a mouthful of sugar. Apparently, he has never whipped cream in his entire life. He didn't even practice before joining the competition. Derek knew he was out in a heartbeat, and with calm composure, he untied his apron and gave it back. He did a great job, even if his banana cream pie didn't. Well, it was a good try. Salisbury steak with roasted mushrooms, salad, and green beans. You're ordering the Salisbury steak, aren't you? Salisbury steak was the pressure test, and not everyone received the same amount of time. You only have a short time. Despite the time period given, Lindsay marched along to the front brimming with confidence. Gordon Ramsay minced no words in letting her know that her Salisbury steak was disgusting. Oh, 
The best part of her dish was the green beans, and that wasn't exactly a compliment. Salisbury steak is one of Chef Ramsay's signature go-to dishes. It is a mixture of meat, seasonings, and breadcrumbs formed into oval patties, which are then fried into a nice golden brown. The gravy is pretty simple and straightforward. Onions, mushrooms, beef broth, and a few teaspoons of cornstarch. But this straightforward dish led trial lawyer Lindsay Hay straight home. Say goodnight and go home. Pan-seared redfish with shrimp au gratin potato, sugar snap peas, and carrots. Ooh, that one sounds complicated. The mystery box challenge was this season's winner, Geron's biggest downfall. All the contenders were presented with the much-awaited mystery box, and in it was a treasure trove, or shall I say, a treasure net of fresh seafood. The big challenge was to make a delicious dish featuring at least any two of the live catch. And of course, the star of the show has to be what's in the net. This challenge had Chef Aaron Sanchez at the helm. It seemed that the contestants were required to make a New Orleans-style dish, since Chef Aaron owned a restaurant down south. But the cooks were simply told that they had 60 minutes to put everything together. 60 minutes, exactly. Jerron was such a strong contender until this task. He marched in with a beautifully plated pan-seared redfish, with shrimp au gratin potato, sugar snap peas, and carrots. But he wasn't expecting such a brutal yet painfully true observation. His first mistake was leaving the shrimp's intestinal tract intact. This is where all the shrimp's digested meals are stored. Jerron's second error was plating the fish skin side down. And as if that were not enough, Jerron's redfish was over peppered. No bueno it is. No bueno. Panna cotta. Sounds delicious, in theory. What does it feel like to have Chef Gordon Ramsay breathing down your neck? Well, the contestants had a taste of that in this episode. The remaining home cooks left the comforts of the kitchen for the restaurant takeover challenge. But this wasn't a break. The restaurant just happened to be, well, a lowly Michelin star restaurant. It was enjoying a great reputation and so the home cooks couldn't afford to slack off. This was a team challenge to feed 48. The chosen captains for this evening were Jerron and Ashley. Both had a great track record for working well with the other home cooks. Easy decision, you guys have an outstanding track record. Blue team was Jerron, Samantha, and Farron, while the red team was Ashley, Bowen, and Cesar. Each team had their weak points. Ashley's team aimed for perfection, but in doing so, dragged their dinner service. Blue team member Samantha, on the other hand, couldn't get the scallops right and began to get touchy when Jerron pointed that out to her. In the end, both teams got back on their feet. Dishes left the kitchen in the nick of time and diners got their food. The customers were on the fence when asked which one they liked best, so the judges had to make a decision. They chose the blue team to go through the pressure test. White chocolate panna cotta. Unfortunately, Farhan's version didn't sit too well, and in the end, he was booted out. Aw, oh, that's too bad! Pasta times three. I love pasta. This episode pays tribute to LA's firefighters. It was because of their bravery during the Thomas Fire that the region was preserved. What better way to honor them than a well-prepared dinner? Again, this was a team challenge. The blue team led by Cesar was assigned to cook lamb. The red team led by Bowen was assigned to cook sea bass. And what's a challenge without frazzled nerves? Oh my god! Okay, it's happening! Everybody stay calm! What? The judges had to meddle when Bowen needed an instruction on the sea bass. Think the blue team was winning? Not. The blue team had to contend with Farron's lack of experience with lamb, but the team stepped up early in the game and eventually won the hearts of LA's finest. Things grew more exciting with the red team. Easily turning on each other, Bowen was at the receiving end of all the lashing. Only the looming prospect of the pressure challenge snapped them out of it, because now they had to cook not one but three bowls of pasta. Bastianic wasn't very happy. Shanika wasn't happy with her pasta dishes either, and Bowen admitted to not having tried pasta ever. We honestly couldn't tell what could be worse than saying that to an Italian chef. But all's well, Shanika got the boot. I hate goodbyes! <laughs> Raw platter. Uh, are you folks familiar with the raw food vegan movement? This episode's mystery box challenge contained nine amazing ingredients. Potatoes, clams, corn, tomatoes, lobster, venison, butternut squash, peaches, and cranberries. All those ingredients are ingredients that America was built on. Before the home cooks shopped into the pantry, Ramsey, Sanchez, and Bastianic met privately with their mentees. And after a great pep talk, everyone was gung-ho. Ah! It was an intense 45 minutes. Three home cooks were put on the spotlight. Ashley's duck breast with cranberry relish, granola, and romanesco. 
and Farron's lobster three ways. Chef Ramsay had only nice words to say with Ashley's duck breast. It had the wow factor, gorgeously plated on a slab of wood, and overall it was Ashley's best performance so far. In the end, those who weren't safe had to contend with another challenge. Three-time contestant Taylor and Julia were now on the hot seat. Their platters were raw, looked unappetizing. Gordon Ramsay was slowly morphing into his famous alter ego, angry and severely disappointed. In the end, Taylor had to say goodbye. It's gonna be so hard to say goodbye. Something citrus. Citrus flavored for a more refreshing summer experience. This episode's mystery box contained just one ingredient, oil. Turns out that the oil was symbolic. Everyone was going to fry their meals. Generally, fried foods are frowned upon as junk food. But in the hands of home cooks and master chefs, deep fried can be worthy of several Michelin stars. Contestants were going to cook alongside, surprise, surprise, the judges. Gordon Ramsay made a tempura fried squash blossom with crab, vaduvan spice, and caviar apple vinaigrette. Not to be outdone, Chef Sanchez cooked fried oyster taco with habanero aioli and chayote hikama slaw. This dish was a burst of color. Pretty colors. Pretty colors. Joe couldn't come last. So he made Frito Misto, a dish of fried scampi, calamari, lemon, and zucchini. Everyone got to sample these top brass chef's dishes, many gushing over how perfect each dish was. The elimination challenge, however, put everyone on edge yet again. The order for the day was to feature a citrus fruit. Shanika, who won immunity, assigned either savory dishes or sweet dishes. For this part, Ralph was shaken. His Brazo de Mercedes with mixed berry calamansi coulis didn't hit the spot on this ambitious dish, which took two hours to make. It was raw in the middle, doughy and chewy. Interesting texture. <laughs> it's chewy. The challenge of catering to the Air Forces. I think I'm up to the challenge. This episode featured the Air Force's 100th anniversary as the March Air Reserve Base, one of the oldest airfields in America. A hundred airmen graced the show for a luncheon, and the contestants, you guessed it, were tasked to cater the event. This was again a team challenge. The ten contestants were grouped into two teams with Emily and Cesar heading each. The rest were given the opportunity to choose which team to belong to. For starters, the chefs had a grand entrance, and with the time given to them, it was a mad rush to prepare 100 plated courses. Emily started strong by heading the blue team, but her attention to detail and her decisive manner were not enough to get her team off the pressure test. Finally, their guests arrive Air Force style. Cesar and the red team served hanger steak with goat cheese polenta and roasted asparagus. Emily and the blue team served pork, which almost didn't make it because it took so long to cook. Things were starting to sour when Bastianic found a strand of hair in the hanger steak dish. Oh my god. No, no, no. The blue team had their points in spite of the tiff in the kitchen. When the parachute landed on the right spot, it was a clear victory. But there was one more parachute. Turns out this challenge was a tie. In the end, the red team was chosen as the winner because the feedback was better. Emily knew what it was that botched her chances at winning the pressure challenge. And finally, she was given the boot. Uh, bye -bye. We hope you liked the video. Are there any striking worst dishes of MasterChef Season 9 that we missed? If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out our other videos as well. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that gray notification bell to join our notification squad.